Come out with us and play Love your London Have a banana Hello there Welcome to a little special um, about mudlarking now, mudlarking um, is like beach combing, only beach combing. Obviously, you do on the beach. Mudlarking, you do on the foreshore of the rivers. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about it, but unfortunately, uh, since 2016, you pretty much can't do it unless you have a permit. So, we're not actually going to be doing any mudlarking, but we're going to be talking to some experts later on. In fact, one of the experts we're really looking forward to speaking to is the person who wrote this book. Lara Maycomb, she is probably the queen of mudlarking. Uh, she's going to be signing her book later on. As you can see, I mean, we often talk about buy these books, blah, blah, blah. Look how thumbed this one is. This has been well and tr truly loved and cherished. So we're really looking forward to speaking to her. Her social media is full of, uh, of, of her finds. And um, here's a little video of her, of the sort of things that she, that we, I mean, she, she just has this eye that she can just find things here on the banks of the of the of the Thames um, she doesn't dig for them she sees them on on the on the top of the surface she doesn't use metal detectors or anything like that um, she just she'll just find them um, and uh, here's an example really of, of, of the sort of things that she can just suddenly spot where normally the rest of us just see a load of gravel she can spot a buckle or an old coin or or, or something even more exciting now um, I can tell you a little bit about mudlarking. As you can see, this is obviously a tidal river. And um, the difference, I mean, the, the, the twice a day, normally twice a day, sometimes it's only once a day, um, the, um, the river goes up and down. Um, and the difference is seven metres. Seven metres between um, low tide and high tide, which is absolutely amazing. That's the Globe Theatre over there. That, of course, is the Tate Modern. Uh, about half past ten, I think it was at its lowest uh, this morning. But then it'll go up, it'll go up seven metres um, in a few hours. That's, that's how, how much it changes. For £96, you can get a permit for three years, which will allow you to have a look, to do a bit of mudlarking. Um, and you'll often find, especially little clay um, pipes, because back in the 16th century, uh, you, you, you used to like have <coughs> an equivalent of the sort of uh, disposable e-cigarettes you get today. Uh, you, the people used to buy single-use uh, little um, ready-filled uh, clay um, pipes full of tobacco. Um, and uh, obviously they're very popular among the dockers, so they would just throw them into the river afterwards. And that's why the river is so full of them. Now, every single day, because the uh, silt of the Thames is anaerobic, um, is that the right word? Uh, yes, anaerobic. Is anaerobic. That means that there is no oxygen uh, in, in, in it. And that's why everything gets uh, preserved fantastically here in the silt. Um, and every day, obviously, uh, this being a tidal river, um, things get uncovered and those things can be quite surprising um, some amazing discoveries have been found anything that gets found if you're a mudlarker because if you're not a mudlarker you're not meant to be looking at all but anything that gets found has to immediately uh, be reported to the Museum of London um, and they will make a decision on whether or not it is of value uh, and obviously we'll keep it if it is if it's not of significant value then uh, it is yours to keep now the thing is um, so as you can see this is a public right of way and you have to look on the ground in order to make sure that you're not standing on any syringes um, water came all the way up here. Yes, at look at that, look at this mud. So, oh, we have and the mud, it actually would have come right up almost to the top. Yeah. Um, you have to look down, obviously there's, there's um, dog feces as well. Goose poop. Uh, there's goose as well, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So you have to look, you have to, you have to look down all the time. Uneven surfaces. Oh, well it doesn't smell like the Thames used to smell back in the No, back, this is actually one of the cleanest. Uh, as soon as you get down here, this is one that. of the cleanest rivers. 
back in the old days, uh, well, back before 2016, people, including ourselves, would often walk around here and see, obviously without removing any of the, of the upper layer, see what we could find. Right now, even that, unless you have a permit, is illegal. So if you find something, well, you're not meant to touch it. You're not meant to report it. There's no, much, no point reporting it because by the time someone were to come down and look at it, um, the tide would have taken it away. It would be somewhere in the, in the middle of the, of the North Sea. So um, uh, what we want to find out is uh, today is whether those rules um, are too stringent uh, and what also what because you have to look down what happens if you do see something I mean it's there's just stuff everywhere and it's quite hard not to look down I understand that these, these things have to be protected but have they gone too far uh, hopefully we'll speak to Lara later who obviously it is her passion see what she thinks about it yeah so I mean obviously you have to look down all the time in case you're standing on, on, on a syringe or whatever but what if you just happen to notice? I mean, yes, look at that. Uh, here. There's, there's another one. Oops, my foot touched it. So that. You can see it a hollow bit. Yes. Those are mass produced. Those are mass produced from the uh, 16th century. Yeah. Um, now, technically, just even noticing it is actually now illegal because we don't have a permit. There's another one. Ding. And there. And there. See, that one has some a little bit of color. Noodles and noodles. Now, oh. Brick. I mean, some of that could be, you know, they've been making Yes, of course. Of some of these things could be Roman. You often see uh, uh, soles of medieval shoes here as well because, as I said, the, the, the silt. The silt um, uh, looks after it really well. One of the most important uh, websites that you need to be looking at, um, if you were to come down here, uh, whether you have a permit or not, is the list of, diff of the tide. Because obviously um, the tide uh, goes in and out very quickly. You are, you'd obviously you don't want to come down here and, and, and waste a journey and, uh, and, and, and the water's all the way up there. Uh, but equally, you don't want to be um, in one of those areas where the tide can catch you out and you end up um, getting stuck. Um, so, um, and, and this is, there's a lot of um, fast moving water here. You don't want to do that. So, um, this website on your screen, and it's also going to be in the YouTube description below, uh, will give you all the different times uh, for the tides. Um, and, uh, and that way you won't get caught out. We weren't caught out because we checked this morning to make sure that... You know where your stairs are. Yes, there are the stairs there. And you can quickly run into the Founders Arms or wherever it is where your nearest uh, drinking establishment cool. is and, uh, and get away from the rising waters. And, get, and run towards your pint. Run towards your pint and, and then uh, have some running waters of your own. That's right, the, a good London tradition. There's a special thing happening today at Southern Cathedral just, just over there. Uh, it's a mud larking day um, and I hope you're going to be able to speak to some experts also get uh, Lara's book signed um, and find out a little bit more so come and join us from the foreshore of the Thames of the old Father Thames let's make our way now to Southwark Cathedral
So lovely London. Oh God. Yes. Yeah, well, we're doing we're doing a little special about mud, yeah, mudlarking yeah, today. Yeah. Fantastic. Today I'm a mudlark. You're you're a mudlark. I am. I, I, what, what, uh, I, I wouldn't mind asking you. What do you think about you know the the, the rules uh, got very strict in 2016. Yeah. Um, what I, I mean because obviously when you're walking on the on the Thames, you have to look where your feet are yeah. because otherwise you'll be standing on something sharp or. Yeah. But now, nowadays, you're not even allowed to see it, to see stuff, are you? If, you're not, if you don't have a... So what, what happens if you do, by accident, see something? What are you meant to do? It's, it's totally up to you. It's, it, you know, it's, the thing is that there are lots of rules and regulations. A lot of them are old, a lot of them are bylaws. And mainly to discourage people from treasure hunting. Yes. Because I think in the past there have been like large organised gangs that have come onto the foreshore. Right. And because it's such a because a precious living, eroding archaeological site, you know, from Richmond one way down yeah. to the Thames Estuary. So I don't think the, the rules are guidelines as to how to I see, yeah. A lot of this I found on the website since lockdown and I will probably put most of it back in the Thames. You put most of it back in the Thames? Probably not that. I haven't looked up in a little while longer. Oh boy. It's like the I get a great a great a great pleasure out of but when you put them back, finding. will they end up they'll end up sort of in the in the Ted's estuary in the sea, so they'll, they'll probably well, be found, will they? No, because I most I use eyes only, that's the other thing about the license, is that I don't dig, no. I don't metal detect, I don't spray, no. I just use my eyes. So that thing, the shiny thing, yeah. the coin, it washed in on the way. Every day something new. Yeah. Every day something new. When I do that, I go to a spot very close to where I found them. Yeah. At a high tide, and then I, I return them. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, it's a bit like a bit like angling. It's a little fish back yeah, again. Yeah. 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 That's what your work, Flint. Yeah. That's that's in good shape too. Yeah. Work Flint, this is prehistoric. There are your pilgrim badges. There you go, the little body pieces there, the lady with body feet. Isn't that lovely? Oh my gosh. See, so, you know, these are the little bits. Of, those are in much better condition. These are the, these are the handles of the, of the pipes that we were looking at, that we saw noticed on the uh, foreshore earlier on. Kristen here. Look at that. Isn't, well, there she is. Isn't that a beauty? 16th century, that is. 16th century, the, the pipes. Yes, and earlier. So. And there's uh, loads of medieval stuff here as well. Loads of stuff. I'm probably older. Here's your medieval. Oh boy, that's earlier. That's... Here, get the light on. That's, um... Saxon, probably. That's very nice. Hi there. We love, love you, London. You're, you're low, aren't you? Yes, because uh, we, we, we're hoping to chat with you. Uh, and also, uh, my partner, he's, he's read your book, so it's not, not a new one. I'd so love you to sign it. This was a godsend, beginning of the pandemic. Boy, what a fresh, fresh breath of air. We've got to buy a new one for to sign it. No, she, oh. said, she said it'd be all right. <laughs> we, 
<laughs> it's, look how well thumbed it's it been through that book know. about five it's times. Well, well, no, it's it saved my bacon. It's it good. Mindfulness. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. What do you think about the rules that came in in 2016? Do you think they're too stringent or do you think it's a good thing? The thing is, the rules didn't come in in 2016. They were always there. The Port of London uh, Authority decided that they were going to highlight them and make them more um, obvious to people. Right. Um, I don't think they are. I think that we're incredibly lucky in this country. We have a lot of freedom. If you yeah. go to a lot of countries, you just wouldn't be allowed to touch this no. down there. Um, so we're incredibly lucky. And we do need to have some kind of protection for the foreshore. It is our industry, our, it is our archaeological heritage. Um, and, uh, you know, there should be a way of, of keeping an eye on what's coming out. It's really, really important to know what's coming out of the nature. It tells a story. Yeah. But I mean, te technically, if you don't have the uh, a permit, yes. are, you, are you even allowed to pick up on the clay pipes? Or the, the, the party line is, if you're going down onto the foreshore with the intention of searching, yeah. you need to have a permit. You can go down and walk your dog. Yeah. Um, but if you have to spot walk, something by accident, you obviously have you to look down. Permit. You need a permit um, to collect anything from the foreshore. But what, what happens if you see something and you want and you want to make sure that it gets? Reported, and obviously you haven't got time to. You're better off talking to the Port of London Authority, who's right next to me, and they can they can tell you all about it. Because I don't do it. I don't make the rules. Okay. Uh, but um, you know, I think it's important to have regulations and rules, and for uh, for you know people to be aware of what's going on down there. You know, it is private land yep. down there. You do need permission to go onto it. They they give you. They're quite free with their permission. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it's to protect them as much as it is, as it is to you. Because unfortunately, there are people that go down there just an angle and they'll try and sue the PLA. So that's another reason for having it. I think that I think that the, the three-year permit is quite good value, but the one-day permit is really no, ridiculous. I mean, the three-day permit is fantastic. Right? You think how much it costs to go around the, the London Eye? Yeah. Um, and you put it for, for three years, you can go as often as you like. Um, and uh, and as part of that, very importantly, you, you have to report what you find. To yes. The, for the one day permit for 45 pounds, whatever it is, is, is uh, it's very, it is very expensive. That's a bit silly. It I should bring that down. Um, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions because obviously, um, uh, I think it's really good value the, the three year permit, yeah. Um, but the one day permit is so expensive, so. Uh, that's like 40 something pounds. It's yeah, so we've, we've updated the terms recently and there's actually that one day, that 42 pound permit will actually cover you for a month. But you can only go once, go that one. No, no, you can. It's 96 pounds, it's more economical. No, I know, I'm just thinking that for that one day, if you only do that one month, you just go for a three year one, you get it instantly anyway. Yeah. It, you get it instantly, so there's no, there's no waiting list. It's, it's an online system, you register online, upload a photo, make your payment, and your card comes to you by email. Okay. Um, and the other question I wanted to ask, because obviously you're not allowed, to, if you haven't got a permit, you're not allowed to even look. If you're walking your dog or whatever, you have to look where you're going. Absolutely. If you see something, yep. um, and you think that really you should tell someone about it because it looks quite interesting, what do you do? Because you're not really meant to have seen it. So is, is there a hotline that you can call? And I would probably suggest, if you think it's historically important, yep. I would suggest contacting the Find Liaison Officer to yep. talk to them about it. They are the experts in archaeology. But then in um, six hours' time, it'll be underwater, so... Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, we have 95 miles of river that we look after, and so actually for us to be able to respond to something like that would be completely challenging. Um, so the best thing would probably actually to use social media, potentially, to talk to other mudlarkers, other people who've got a permit to maybe reach out and say, somebody, could you come and right. talk to me about this? Or are you on the river? Is anybody else out and about today? Equally, you know, have a look around. If there's anybody else searching, I've just seen something. Have you got a permit? Yeah. Can we take a look? Okay, that's fine. That, 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 that's exactly the answer I was looking for. Thank you very much, Pippa. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. There you go. So, if you do find something, um, don't pick it up if you haven't got a permit, uh, but look around and you might find that there is someone uh, on the foreshore who does have a permit who can pick it up for you, uh, or alternatively um, use social media and, and maybe reach out if, you, if you've got time before the tide comes back in again. Um, uh, you then maybe have a chance to uh, to ask someone is it important 
should someone come immediately and collect it uh, and take it to the authorities. Uh, and we're now going to uh, see what we can do over here behind us. Maybe uh, take part in one of the little fun activities that they've set up. A naughty little Roman doggy who walked over a, um, a brick as it was being made. It looks like they never ended up making the brick because they told off the little doggy and threw it into the Thames. And we're not to know that hundreds of years later, thousands of years later, probably nigh on 2,000 years later, we're looking at it on a table. So that little poppy dog, long gone, but his imprint lives on. Well, you can make a print of that, I'm assuming. Look, you just clean out the dirt and have that yeah. as, a, as a negative. Once you've pushed it in, you can get the edges sort of much more thin. And then you, you find a tile and then then you can press it onto your tile so it sort of stays on the this this one's a little bit dried out well the thing i'd like to point out to you is that you've also got one claw here yes that's yes. what i, I had to get it. so this is a hypercoarse tile sure you know where they they stack these big bricks up on top of each other to hold the floor mm -hmm. um, and then the underfloor heating can circulate underneath. Right. So they're very distinctive in the clay they're made of and the thickness so we know that it's Roman. But what I love most about it is that clay would have only been soft enough to make that ball print <laughs> right. for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also a point where the guy who made the tile might actually just sit down and watch his tile dry. And yeah. the animal crawling over And at some point the dog arrives and the tiler says, Oi! Dog! And at that point the dog goes, oh, and runs. Yeah. So this isn't Roman London. This is not one year. No, this is one second yeah. in Roman London. And possibly an interaction between dog and human in Roman London. So that for me is just the most special time of all. Is that, is that, is that, is that um, yeah, you might want to get a bit thinner if you can. Uh, no, actually that's fine. It's just around the edge. Yes, go for it. Let's make sure there's no bits in there. It's not the easiest thing because it's actually yeah. quite shallow. But go for it. And if it doesn't work, you try again. So I'll just, put, I'll just put this on there. Yes. So now press down. Yes. And that's exactly the way to do it. Keep one hand on it when you press with the other so it doesn't move. <laughs> Now we're going to treat it like blue tech. Yeah. And see if it works. It might not, it does work on those. But it's not as porous as no. the bisque fried ones. Fantastic. Yeah. There so, what do we do with that now? Do we, we put it on a. So, what we do now, do you want to put it on a tile? Yeah. There's a tile. Put right in. Yeah. Well, if you know, you can use this here to put right in. So, we're going to, we've smoothed the back. It's wet enough. So, you arrange it the way you like. You can tidy up the edges if you like. But press it very gently yeah. from the middle to get the air out. Otherwise, it'll crack. Okay. Do you want to do, do this? Do you spend your yeah. And then you can use, um, you can use, uh, any of these tools, like the knife upside down, if you want oh, to, yes. or the kidney, you can do. <laughs> you know? Sure. So whatever you want. I like that. Though. I like just leaving that. Looks like edge. a, and it also looks like a wax seal. Yeah, let's leave that. She's absolutely right. Oh no! How long will it take to dry? Um. Because it's quite thick, uh, and in this heat it'll dry quick, so maybe yes. it'll be dry by yes. the end of tomorrow, I think. Okay, so how, so, so what? So I'm going to wrap it up three hours ago. Yeah. When you get cold, okay. unwrap it. Unwrap it, okay. Yeah, well, well, let's see. Yeah, that's lovely. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Five pounds, is it? Right. Most of them are five. This one's a more expensive. Oh. Yeah, I don't remember what price. I don't, I don't mind. Where did that one come from? Six pounds for the right? Yeah, are they designs that you've made or? or? They're yeah, all copied from original badges, sure. but they're oh, yeah. but they're ones that I've made. Yeah. Very nice. So, yeah, well, that was that was fun, wasn't it? A um, little fun day out. Um, we learnt a little bit. This is an educational channel. Uh, don't forget that um, uh, you really need to uh, support us. Um, you don't have to support us financially. Obviously, you can. You can. Um, you can become our patron by a Patreon. But um, there are other ways you can support us for free, such as um, subscribing to our channel. We're almost reached monetization. Um, share these videos. Uh, comment in the comments below because YouTube really likes that. Um, and also uh, make sure that you uh, that you like as well. So and when you subscribe, ring that notification bell as well. Um, anyway, so, see you, where is she? See you at the next one. Bye. Perfect. We hope you enjoyed our special about mudlarking, even though you can't right now at this moment apply for a permit, though these are bound to be reinstated at some point, so keep checking the Port of London Authority's website for updates. All the details are in the YouTube description below. Our next episode will be the first in our seven-parter about the London Borough of Barking and Dagenham. There's going to be a lot of interesting history to unearth and lots of fun people to meet along the way. Till next time... Acton Town to Wimbledon From Brixton to beyond Love your London Have a banana